Hello and welcome to another Murders at Karloff Manor Draft. I'm Paul Chion, and we are still well on our way to rank one. We are currently sitting at rank number 23. Michael Jordan's number was 23, so that's a good place to start. Hopefully we can uh, open something nice and uh, continue our climb, continue our climb. Before I click this ready button, though, I do want to say that I did launch my Patreon channel. Shout out to all the patrons currently subscribed. And um, if you wanted to support the channel in other ways, the Patreon is an excellent way to do so. Link in the description below. Okay. This is not what I wanted. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, okay. The inside source saved us. All right. I looked at this pack and I was just like, wow, the uncommons are crap. The rares are crap. And the commons are mostly all crap. The only card here that's remotely close to being something you're happy with is the inside source. Unscrupulous agent, if you're playing a black control, that can also be fine. Vigilante is a decent filler card. But I guess we'll for first pick the inside source out of a really, really underwhelming pack. Moving on here, it's another underwhelming pack with double slime against humanity, insidious roots, convenient target, fey flight. I just don't really like any of those cards. Out cold is okay if we want to go blue white tempo. There's a slice from the shadows and a crowd control warden. I'm just going to take the crowd control warden. I actually like this card, especially after a first pick inside source. This gives us the ability to either stay white or be a little bit more flexible and go white or green. Second pick crowd control warden does feel pretty bad though, but I think I don't necessarily want to take slice second pick. So I'll just take the crowd control warden and uh, see what the rest of the packs give us. But this is a less than exciting start. Now this pack is definitely better. We're seeing a bunch of green cards. We could be looking to go into green white. Uh, moving into this pack, we have Culvert, Ambusher, Tin Street Gossip, Case of the Shattered Pack, Crowbot Haunch, all playable on commons. Haas the Vigilante is okay at the top end. Projector Inspector, if I wanted to go blue-white. And then Panther and Tipster. I do highly prefer green to blue. We have a face-down creature already. I'm going to take Tunnel Tipster. I do love me Tunnel Tipster. Uh, and I'm going to take it here over all the other cards here. We have a face-down creature already. It's a two-mana card. It ramps us. Everything that kind of we want out of this deck. And now we're just going to take... I don't think the Coveted Falcon is an especially strong card. Uh, it's better if you can draft around it with some enchantment-based removal. But even then, it's not something that I'm excited about. It looks a lot cooler. And there's a lot of words on it. But it's actually not that good in practice. I think I'm just going to stay on color here and take a Culvert Ambusher out of this pack. It's okay. Not amazing. But we have a Tipster. It ramps us into being able to play this turn four as a four or five, or you can play it face down. And the rest of the pack is just not that great. If I wanted to be Boros, I could take the Red Herring. You could also take a Shadowy Backstreet if you wanted a land, but let's just take the Ambusher here and um, take it from there. And now it looks like we could be setting up for a reasonably aggressive green-white deck. There's nothing else that stands out to me other than Soul Innervation. Uh, there's also Fester Leech. But we have some green cards already. I don't see a reason to branch out um, of these colors and take something like a Soul Innervation or a Fester Leech when I can just take an on-the-job here. We already have an inside source to try to go wide. And now this is an interesting pack. This is highly interesting. There's an inside source, Analyze the Pollen, Repulsive Mutation, and V2 Gazi Inspector. Okay. So if I wanted to be very aggressive, I think inside source is the pick. I don't have any bomb creatures for Analyze the Pollen. Now, if I wanted to draft a lot of colors, then I can take something like a Repulsive Mutation. But with the On the Job and the Crowd Control Warden, this and this is a pretty late inside source, I've been liking going lots of different colors, but right now, with all the cards that we have, I think inside source is perfect. Inside source goes really well with the Crowd Control Warden and the On the Job, so I'm going to take that there. I'm going to take that there. And here, I'm actually going to take Auspicious Arrival over the Granite Witness. I like having some number of combat tricks. I do love me this combat trick. And the, win the Granite Witness is decent, but I do like it less when I'm not specifically blue and white because it's a lot harder to flip over. So I'll just take the, the second spell to go into my deck. Here, I'll take a Defenestrated Phantom, but really would rather not play it if I can. Avoid it. I'll take a case file auditor. You never know. We can end up with like six enchantments. 
And let's start picking up some slimes against humanity. I don't know how many of those I need before I start taking them. Before I start playing with them. But we'll take one here. But only seven cards out of the first pack. Trying to do some of the, the go white thing. There was the tunnel tipster. I mean, we had a lot of decent options. I mean, there was the repulsive mutation. But like I said, this deck... Oh, last pick Fester Leech. Black might be open. This deck looks like it might want to just be kind of more aggressive than try to splash a bunch of different colors. And let me just stop talking and take this Tulsimir real quick. <laughs> There's also a Bite Down on Crime, which is a great removal spell. But of course, Tulsimir is a slam dunk rare, slam dunk bomb. Uh, push Pull is okay. I like it when you can cast the pull side of this as well. I generally don't like to play this if I can only cast Push. Uh, Extract Confession is the best black common. Actually, this is a decent pack. Extract, Cold Case Cracker, Projector Inspector, Bite Down on Crime, Push Pull. So uh, a lot of playable cards for people, but we're taking Tulsimir. We're happy about it. And we're moving on. Now we have a pack with zero green or white cards. There isn't Sample Collector. Now, I don't know if Green White is the best at collecting samples, but we are going to be a little bit more aggressive. I can either take Sample Collector or take Torch the Witness as a splashable removal spell. Hmm. I mean, we are so bad at collecting evidence here. I'm gonna take... Hmm. Do I just want to stay two colors? I mean, if something trades, this still just becomes a 3-4. All right, let's... I Look, this is very rare. This is very rare for me. I'm going to show some restraint, okay? Because this the strategy for this deck is a lot different than the five-color decks. Let's take on-color cards, let's be aggressive, and let's try to beat opponents down this way. Here, there's an Archdruid Charm and a Nervous Gardener. Uh, I do prefer the Archdruid Charm. It's pretty hard to cast, but we do have a Tipster here, and it's an excellent, excellent instant speed trick. So I'm going to take that over to Gardener. Now I'll take a second Tipster here, um, just to have another two drop to play. We have two face down creatures, would like a few more, if possible. But I think I like that over the second copy of the On the Job for now. Now we'll take a Bite Down on Crime. So we're definitely getting hooked up in this pack. Got a Bite Down on Crime, Arch Druid Charm, Auspicious Arrival, and On the Job, and now Fanatical Strength. So uh, we are looking pretty good on the spells and tricks angle. Uh, happy to just pick up more cheap things to cast. And this is another pack with <laughs> another Ley Line of the Guild pack in the draft. We'll take another Fanatical Strength. Now I'm good. I'm good on tricks. I'm good on tricks now. We have Auspicious Arrival, Double Fanatical Strength, and On the Job, along with this Arch Druid Charm, which is also better, by the way, because we have a Tulsimir Midnight's Light to fetch. So what are we looking for? Just things to play early, right? Uh, Season Consultant, uh, Market Watch Phantom, cards of that nature are kind of what I'm looking for now. A couple of Mana Sinks wouldn't be bad either. I mean, with how these, these packs are going, I have triple Defenestrated Phantom in the sideboard. We might, we might play a couple of those. It's possible. And, uh, you know, we have an on the job. We have a crowd control warden. I mean, it's possible we play bustle. It's possible we play bustle. I'll, I'll leave it here. It's an overrun. It's a bad overrun. It's great with Crowd Control Warden. And you know, I'm actually happy with that Sanitation Automaton. Whoo! Opening all the rares. Wojak Investigator here. And that's a killer among us as well. What's bet? Like, I'm going to take the rare because I w I've played with Killer Among Us. I wouldn't be shocked if a Killer Among Us is better. I wouldn't be shocked. But I'm going to take the 3 mana 2 4 Flying Vigilance card. Because we have Hustle, Bustle, and On the Job, but like, come on, it's a Wojak Investigator. Let's be real. Let's take it. Let's be happy. That's a Glint Weaver and a Nervous Gardener and an On the Job. Hmm. So we have a couple of Tunnel Tipsters. I don't know that I need this Nervous Gardener because we're not really splashing. If you're not splashing, this card is just fine. 
So with the double tunnel tipster, I am interested in having just one more good card at the top of my curve. So yeah, let's just take the Glint Weaver here. And now I'll take a V2 Gazi Inspector. Ooh, that's a Detective Satchel. Don't need Fanatical Strength, but happy with another two drop in my deck. So let's take the V2 Gazi Inspector over Granite Witness. So now we're on four two mana cards. Ooh, that's interesting. So there are zero green or white cards that I really want in my deck. So I'm gonna take the Urgent Necropsy. This card is a fantastic card if I wanted to splash. But right now, our mana is not set up for that, so it's currently not going to make the deck. Now I'm going to take Makeshift Binding. Extremely happy about that for our deck. And, ooh, Bite Down on Crime versus a Museum Night Watch. I think it's just Bite Down on Crime. This is just an okay face down creature. How many face down creatures do we have? Just three? But we do have a couple in our sideboard. But Bite Down on Crime is pretty premium in my opinion, so I'm going to take it. But now we're kind of good on spells, don't need any more. Like I said, we can play some Defenestrated Phantoms if we really need to. Don't think this is a Chalk Outline deck. I don't think I'm ever playing the Airtight Alibi, but I suppose I'll take it. Ooh, uh, this, I mean, Double Inside Source, Tulsimir... I don't think it's an evolutionary leap deck. I don't think anything's really an evolutionary leap deck. So let's take the on the job there. And now we're just tabling a bunch of combat tricks that we don't really need. There's a case of the Shattered Pact. I guess I'll take that over Fanatical Strength number three in case I want to splash the Necropsy. We're not that great at putting cards in our graveyard either. So, it, you know, Black has is a little bit better at that. And I'm not playing Topiary Panthers or anything of that nature. So it's probably just not worth splashing. I just don't have the setup for it. Had we taken slightly different cards, like the Nervous Gardeners and such, it would be okay, but we didn't. So yeah, we're probably gonna have to play some Defenestrated Phantoms as filler cards for our deck. But hey, um, with Double Tipster, you kind of want some face down creatures anyways. So let's put those in. And I think this is our deck. I think this is our deck. This I don't want to play Sanctuary Wall. Uh, I don't want to play the Case File Auditor. Here's a bunch of face down creatures. And our mana base is going to be, yep, nine forest, eight planes makes sense. Don't want to cut uh, any of these. Actually, uh, with the charm, I should probably play nine forest, eight planes. And then we can just cut two cards from here. And then we can probably cut like maybe one of these and one of these. Just to have a variety of combat tricks and just keep our removal count. Oh, wait, sorry. I'm not playing make your move. So I can play another combat trick here and call it a day. Uh, do I want... It's not hustle bustle. It's, it's either a second copy of on the job or a second copy of Fanatical Strength. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the Fanatical Strength. I'm gonna go for Fanatical Strength. I th I just like the extra oomph that this provides. So let's just try that. Okay, what do we have? Um, no white sources, but I'm still gonna keep this. I'm going to go, I have the double tipster into a face down creature. So my tipsters will grow and just need one white source and our hand kind of gets unlocked. One reason to maybe play the uh, on the job over one of the other pump spells might just be because I have sample collector because I need to collect evidence three for this card to be good. This card's not especially great either, but let's keep. Turn one Rubble Belt Maverick from the opponent. This would actually probably have been decent in our deck. This this does feel like a deck where I would actually play Rubble Belt Maverick. All right, there's the the twenty third card for our deck. We drew it. Black green Gravestone Strider. Okay, so just seeing those two cards immediately makes me think like they they might be doing some insidious roots shenanigans. 
right? Because these are both excellent cards for that. Chalk Outline, Insidious Roots, Shenanigans, maybe. Would like to find a land here. They have a nice 1, 2, 3 curve. Oh, man. I have an Archdridge Charm. Which I can play to get a land, but that feels so bad, right? So I kind of want to put a permanent in, permanent in play. Is it the sample collector just because it's it's a big creature? Yeah, I'm going to play this just because it's got three toughness. And so it's a really good blocker on this board. Like I can block everything. And I could have played a face down phantom, but the thing is, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to be spending my mana basically every turn. So I'm not really blocking with the tunnel tipster anytime soon anyways. All right. I suppose they're going to use the rubble belt maverick to pump something. Oh, and they did have insidious roots. I mean, it felt that way. It definitely felt like they had Insidious Roots. This is Sorcery Speed. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard. They're all in on this card. I'm just going to exile it. <laughs> you know they're upset. I mean, even... even oh, never mind. They're not upset at all. They have hide in plain sight. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. That's not... You're not... You can't... You can't draft an Insidious Roots deck and just beat me with real cards. That's... That's unreasonable. I mean, I don't know what to do with these face down cards. Wow, they are they are so all in on that insidious roots. I mean, they might have another one. Look at this. They only have three mana though. I can just block, right? At least with my sample collector. If they attack with their face down cards, certainly. Okay. I mean, yeah, I can still I can still just block with the investigator. Okay. Um. Definitely attack with the investigator. And then we're gonna start. Slowly playing some face down creatures, but I am interested in growing my tipsters, so I'm just going to play one at a time because every time I do that, I put a counter on my tipsters. Too bad I, I don't have the mana to quite flip it up here. I can attack with the sample collector at some point. <laughs> what are you? They have five mana. It can be like an offender at large, maybe. I'm thinking it's just like a crocodile for something. I mean, it can, it can be any number of things. I'm not, I, I'm not going to lose much sleep if I lose this creature, so... It's a Vengeful Creeper, sure. Oh, they flipped it over for five mana. I'm like, what happened? I was like, what happened there? Um, let's play this as a face down card. I don't think I want to attack with Sample Collector. Oh, I can flip this up though. Why don't we do that? Yeah, we're at 17. Then now our tipsters grow. And this is the best I've seen Defenestrated Phantom. When our opponent just plays all 1 mana 1 1s and 2 mana 1 3s. Oh, the splash to Tristani? What? So they use the white on this so they can only give Death Touch. They can only give Death Touch. 
Uh, okay. I guess we'll take it. They can't give double strike here. Ooh, crowd control warden. I mean, I'm kind of interested in just bashing them for 10. Uh, they, so now they can give creatures double strike. So I just really want to attack with the flyers. And I just need to make sure I block like the big creatures. But yeah, let's just... Let's just turn this face up. And do I play a face down crowd control warden? I just don't want to die. That's all. I mean, they only have... To give double strike, they can only give one thing double strike and... Right, because they have the grapes, the, the strider. All right, let's just play this. I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not opposed to also blocking with the Wojek Investigator. I have two, four, three flyers in play. But next turn, if they make a really big attack and I just block everything, I still have two Phantoms and two Tipsters that are four fours to attack with. And so. I feel like I'm generally pretty safe unless they have, uh, unless they drew fanatical strength. If they drew fanatical strength, there's not much we can do. So I'm just going to play like they don't have it. But there are other cards to consider. Um, get a leg up plus double strike would be also lethal. Not much we can do there either. So it's really just a matter of blocking the three creatures on the right, because they're all face down cards, and seeing if they have enough to kill us. This looks like a bite down on crime. That's okay. All right, so we're just going to block the two biggest creatures. And that's three, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's not enough. Almost, though. Almost. Look at that. Archdruid's Charm. Doing stuff. I bet they were so excited with all their Mavericks and Gravestone Striders. Gra a Gravestone Strider is... Awesome with Insidious Roots, by the way, because not only you get, I keep forgetting this too, and, but it happens to me all the time, is they, they sack, they exile the Gravestone Strider from their graveyard and then remove another creature and you get two triggers off of one card. That's really, really strong. This is a really weird hand. I'm going to keep it. I don't have any creatures, but I do have this makeshift binding and inside source was the perfect draw there. All right, the, ooh, the delayed mask maker. It's way better on turn one. Just giving you all tips here. Mask maker turn one is where you want to be. But turn two is still fine, but you're not really getting the discount here. We're going to play inside source. And then hopefully not get destroyed. This, oh, they have a shock. Ah, uh, Okay, the Mask Maker was still really good because it allowed them to play a face down creature and shock. So, yeah, that was really, that was quite good. Ooh, Crows and Tusker, little value card. So, if I had to draw a land, man, my next turn is kind of weird. I, I, I'm not sure what to do. And I did draw a land. Bite down on crime seems very weak. I can't cast makeshift binding because it's just going to be on a mass maker. All 
I can use the makeshift binding on a face down creature next turn. They use their shock. They use the tusker that turn. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what to do here. It's like, do I use fanatical strength to just try to kill something with with my opponent with four mana up? Maybe not. Maybe I, I guess I should have just attacked for one. All right, Krenko's Buzz Crusher is an excellent makeshift binding target. And yeah, let's beat down. Guess I should have done that the previous turn. Another one? And a face down card. Okay, so they're kind of going off here. Um, so I can use bite down on crime to kill a face down creature. Four, five, six, seven. I can attack with my inside source. Hmm. I can also fanatical strength my inside source and then bite down the Krenko's Buzz Crusher. But I do have a Glint Weaver that can block the Buzz Crusher. All right. That one's probably the bigger one, right? Nope. Damn it. They got the wrong one. We'll chump here. And um, cross our fingers and hope that Glint Weaver is what we need. This delay makes me feel like this is an offender at large, which is very problematic. Because it looks like they're considering flipping it up to get in for more damage. I don't think it's a fanatical strength. All right. Uh, they're just going to play another thing? I mean, if they had another thing to play, it doesn't make sense for them to go with the um, flip. Well, I don't know. If they have a galvanize here, that's awesome. that's awesome. So if they attack me. Okay. All right. They attacked me with the buzz crusher. Oh man. I'm I'm going to take it. There's just no way they attack me with the Buzz Crusher there unless they have something. But at least this is not an offender at large. I need another creature here. That's not going to do it. This is the 6-7 maybe? Oh, I can't... Ugh, I can't block it, right? They didn't even flip it over. Why do all my opponents have this card? All right, well. I think this is going to be... Uh, you know, as much as I love, the, uh, I love me a spider, this is just a little too much to handle. Uh, Tolsimir, I guess. Maybe Tulsimir gets us out of this. Crowd Control Warden does not. I mean, we're like dead on board? 
Yeah, we just didn't, uh, we weren't able to find enough action this game. All right, dead on board. Okay. All right, no more hide in plain sights, okay? No more hide in plain sights. Let's, uh... Granted, I guess we're one and one against hide in plain sights. Okay, I'll keep this. I mean, look, our deck doesn't have a ton of twos, so a lot of opening hands are not going to have it. We have a face down card. We have the Arch Druid's Charm. Ooh, Automaton. Hopefully we can find a Plains. Don't think I want the Ambusher. We want Plains. attack. Let's play a phantom. No blocks. Wow, they had nothing? All right, well, we're just going to keep playing face down cards. This is probably a shock on a face down creature. Although they should have played that a while, like before I attacked, right? Uh, maybe not. Like they just took extra damage. Okay. Bite down on crime is nice. Person of interest. All right, we drew the white source. I don't I don't even remember what our face down cards were though. Hmm. I think they just don't block. Do I want to use this arch druid's charm to get something? Do I want to use it to fight? There's just a lot of different options here. But if we're in a racing situation, I do like just biting and attacking. And I don't think we need to keep up fanatical strength, so. Yep. This helps us helps us keep pace with our opponent and we're at 16 there at 11 and we have a fanatical strength and we have a makeshift mind a makeshift binding to gain us life cornered crook okay definitely killing that one oh double fanatical strength does that do it three six seven eight nine ten not quite let's just go ahead and just binding it the cornered crook and attack but this almost assuredly will make next turn lethal. We're at 14. They're at 7. We have two face down cards with double fanatical strength. They're going main phase auspicious arrival. That's a good sign. That means they're looking for something. They're going to keep the innocent bystander back. The thing is, what can they do if I just, on my Ward 2 creature, just double Fanatical Strength, right? I guess they can Lightning Helix me. They can Lightning Helix me. But I'm going to go for it. They already cast one. Dead. I guess I could have cast that on the other face down card. But it's okay. Fanatical strength. That, that was the last card we put in. It got the job done. Got the job done. Just beating people down. Trying to race them. Two and one. Let's keep it going. Okay. Opponents going first. We have a crowd control warden to play face down. We can't really cast this Arch Druid's Charm. Maybe this was a mulligan. But like I said before, we don't have that many twos. 
So a lot of our hands are going to just be like face down cards that we can play on turn three. Now, granted, this one's especially bad because we can't play Glint Weaver or Archdruid's Charm. Wow, that's that's aggressive. That is aggressive. Usually, like my kind of, I mean, they must have an aggressive hand, but my rule of thumb is I generally don't like playing Nervous Gardener on the play turn two. Uh, if I'm on the draw, I'll play it if my opponent plays a, a two drop. That's kind of where I'm at with it. This Tulsimir hopefully gets us back in. If we just draw one land, things look great. It's probably an another Nervous Gardener. <laughs> yeah. They got a Swamp, and then they're probably playing a Face Down card. Or oh, a Projector Inspector, okay. And now, what do we do? I'm actually going to attack with Inside Source. Yeah, this is great. Oh. Nice try, opponent. You you really got me. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I just <laughs> the fake block. The fake block is is a very funny block. Um, I played this because uh, crowd control warden. I can just play face up, and I'd much rather do that. And so I'm gonna, I'm just playing the worst creature here, face down, and then. Certainly, if they attack me, I'm just going to trade this with anything just to keep my life total high. When your opponent leads out with turn two Nervous Gardener, they kind of want to get you dead. I, I, do, I mean, do I, do I have to say it? This is the third hide in plain sight in four games. Like, at least play a different bomb. Ugh. It is what it is. Get a leg up. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Oh, oh. Let's draw a land at least. At least make it at least make it fair, right? Okay, we drew a land, so. Tulsimir. Your turn. All right. Now we have Auspicious Arrival with Tulsimir, which is really nice. If they attack, I think I just blocked. They used their combat trick already. Do they want to make bold attacks with their face down creature? Ooh, on the job. I mean, I'm attacking. Uh, you can block. Let's see how they block. Wow, this is a perfect block for on the job. So I suppose I'll cast it. Forensic researcher, okay. They get to loot. Normally I would cast Auspicious Arrival, but just this lined up so well that I wanted to go with the uh, I wanted to go with the on the job here, and then I can go Crowd Control Warden plus Auspicious Arrival on a later turn. Wow, a get a, a, <laughs> a second copy of Get a Leg Up, huh? Well, that doesn't actually save it, right? Why did they? Uh, I guess it kills the wolf. That doesn't actually save it. I can still kill it. All right. No, that was still good. We got get a leg up. 
and projector inspector, and we killed forensic researcher, and we still have a 3-2 lifelinker in play, and our hand is pretty loaded here still. Okay, that's a bite down on crime. We're going to take six here. Do they have another bite down on crime? No, B2 Gazi Inspector. They're going to want to attack me for a lot, I guess. I still like making two for Inspector. No, they're just attacking me for six. Okay. Yeah, let's just play this face up. Five, five, get in there. I don't know what this face down card is. I'm going to take it. Bubble smuggler? Oh, it's panther. Okay. It's okay. Uh, we can get them this turn. Let's play a face down card. And then next turn, we can uh, block with the Crowd Control Warden. Then cast Auspicious Arrival. All right. We are clawing our way back in with uh, some, timely, some timely combat tricks, I'm going to say. We're not really in a position to attack here, so I'm still going to pass. I, instead of flipping up the Defenestrated Phantom, I think I'm just... Oh my gosh. Oh, we don't even have the Forest. Ooh, that's brutal. I mean, I have the Archdruid's Charm. That is brutal. Wow, that was a great draw. All right, um, with the panther attack, I think I'm going to crack a clue here. See what I draw. Okay, we drew the forest. So we can use the Archdruid's charm to kill the coerce to kill. And I'm just going to, yeah, I just got to do this. I'm going to trade here with the panther. And what, were there any other, I mean, look, I just want to look. Yeah, this, this, this makes so much sense. All right. You have too many shenanigans, opponent. Too many. Uh, how? Okay, so let's just think about how we want to sp spread this. I think one here. I think, I think one across the board is pretty good. There's no like super right or wrong answer on that one. Ooh, fanatical strength. Jeez. Okay. We have seven mana, so this takes five to flip up. I do want to play Sample Collector. But I do have fanatical strength. So maybe I just attack there. Nothing really bite down on crime worthy right now. Although might just do it here just to put maximum pressure. Yeah, you know what? Let's just go for it here. Let's um let's just kill everything. Okay. Wow. They had quite the start, but we also had bombs of our own. We just needed to stabilize.
They had a really quick start. The um, on the job was really, really good there. That led to a really favorable trade for us. They had coerce to kill, but we had the removal spell. That charm, killing en uh, artifacts and en enchantments. Whew. Nice. All right, so we're three and one. Rank 22, moving up slowly. Would like to be on the play. That's That, that would be a nice feeling. But our combat tricks were excellent in that game. Let's keep this. Give me a tipster at least, maybe. Nope. I mean, I got three of these, so I can't really be too... too I can't complain when I draw them, you know? Face down card. I don't want to expose the investigator to a bite down just yet. And we're not drawing extra cards and I'm not really going to be blocking with it anyways. Okay. Ooh, land was really good. So next turn, they're probably attacking with the face down card and I can't really block. So I'm just going to attack. Okay. Oh, is this the Night Watch? They might have attacked me though. No, it's it's the Night Watch. I'm gonna save my combat tricks here. Um I'm gonna play it now. And just hope they don't have bite down on crime. They'd have to spend their turn to do it. Makeshift binding is okay because we have the charm to get it eventually. They have six mana, four cards in hand, the green white mirror. I mean, look, they went first. They played, they have more mana than I do. I'm not really drawing cards off of this anyway, so I just you just got to look this as a in this particular game it's a three mana two four flying vigilance, which is good, but just there's no need to really save it at all costs, right? It's not like I was on the play and I'm up cards and I want to make sure I get value out of this. So play it just because it's the best body that I can play, and the next turn we'll we'll see what we can we'll, we'll see what we can do. However, I'm not going to throw it away to a combat trick. So that's a really great attack. They could very easily not have a combat trick there. But green-white has tons of combat tricks. So I simply can't afford to block there. Would love to draw a land. If I, would, if I draw a land... Okay, well, I guess I can't complain about that. I'm actually going to pass here. Feels a little bit risky, but they're, it's going to be hard for them to attack. And if they do nothing, if they do nothing, I can still use um, Auspicious Arrival to draw cards. Interesting. Uh, so they're trying to attack for a lot. Hmm. So they can turn this into a 7-7 with a fanatical strength. I'm just going to block the tunnel tipster here. I don't think this can go too bad. Let's cast Auspicious Arrival. Then they're going to go plus 3, plus 3 Trample. And we have plus 3, plus... Oh, Airtight Alibi. Okay. Nobody plays around the double combat trick. <laughs> uh. Definitely drawing a card here to try to hit land drops. Definitely playing the tipster and we'll attack. 
And now with one card in hand, if they attack me with a detective, I'm putting my investigator in front of it. Sure. Wow, they drew something else this turn too? Thought they were out of gas. And honestly, having them use the combat trick there isn't the worst because we're exhausting their combat tricks and then we get to slam Tulsimir and there's a higher chance that that's going to be successful, right? So let's get Tulsimir in play. Now, what happens if they attack with their face down creature? Could be a 6-7. Now they have to consider all their options. What on earth? Okay, so I'm going to put do the safe block here. Oh, it could be the overrun creature, I guess. I don't understand. You have seven mana. You don't want to flip over either of your flip face down cards? Wow, what? I'm going to keep up Archdruid's Charm. So let's go ahead and play a face down Ambusher. And keep up the charm. I don't know what they can flip up, but. Okay. It's just like really mediocre creatures. I'm okay with that. I mean, they're at eight life. You can't just do. What is this? Oh, it's a Vindicator. Oh, no. That's an Aurelia's Vindicator, folks. Why didn't I block that? Wait, is it a Vindicator? Oh, it's the Radical. Okay. I was just like, what is happening? <laughs> okay. Managed to get that one. Managed to get that one. Combat Tricks? I'm just going to say MV. Shout out to Combat Tricks. Shout out to the Combat Tricks. They carried... They've been carrying our games with, uh, you know, we have a decent green-white deck, but it's not spectacular. Tulsimir definitely saves us in basically all of our games. But the combat tricks got us there. The combat tricks got us there. Okay. Die roll with a tipster. Die roll with a tipster. That's, that's what we want to see. That is what we want to see. Turn two tipster. Turn three face down uh, crowd control warden. Do that. They kept both on top. Wow. All right. Big reveal. Second color. Green, white. Season consultant here. And yeah, we're just going to go ahead and play crowd control face down. And then we drew the land for the Tulsimir. The nice thing about Tulsimir. I mean, there's lots of nice things about Tulsimir. It's just, just like if they have a removal spell, sure. You still have a 3-2 life linker, right? Ugh. See, that's just rude. That's just rude, opponent. <sighs> what is one to do? I mean, they missed the land drop. Am I kind of in the market to... For example, do I want to bite something down this turn? Like the consultant, maybe? Yeah, I just feel like I can't do nothing for a turn.
This is also really weird sequencing, but I think it's correct. You attack first, then you bite. <laughs> So now they kind of know that we have a combat trick, but it's the way to get damage through. Because if I bite first, then attack, then they can just trade with the automaton. I don't have words for this. What is happening? Like, what actually is happening here? <laughs> oh my god. That's so insane to me. I mean, I think my opponent did that to get tempo back, but I'm happy eating a creature and flipping over my card, right? So it's not too bad. Uh, but now we're at 18, so we'll keep the 4-4 back on D, and we'll play the Tulsimir. Hide in plain sight number four? Is this number four? Maybe five? I don't know. I think it's four. Four in six games. All right, this is a bite down on crime. No, it's a buried in the garden. Even better. And I can't even get it with the Archdruid's charm. Okay. I'm glad I kept the crowd control warden back. Oh my gosh. Is it buried in the garden into bite down on crime? That would be absurd I think that's what it is wow what a turn I mean I went Tulsimir and they're gonna go kill my 5-5 five five and my 4-4 four four and attack you and it looks like they're targeting the automaton yeah that's an obscene obscene turn alright give me a Forest or a creature? All right, so that's a forest. I wanted to have a fanatical strength up to go with my Tulsimir. I don't, gosh, I don't, I don't know which one of these is like cloaked. Oh, okay, here we go. This one is disguised. This one is cloaked. Okay. So that is a dog walker. We're going to gain some life here. All right. Ooh, V2Gazi Inspector is not bad. Let me think here. This is actually a pretty big turn. Um, I mean, I can still keep Tulsimir back. What if I make a 4-5? Then they have to block with all three of these. Yeah, maybe I'm just I just want to get sample collector going. So I need to do this for six. Okay. So now my sample collector, if I can get things into my graveyard, I can now use my sample collector to start putting counters on Tulsimir. Okay, eavesdropper was a good draw. Forest would be fantastic because I could that would allow me to do instant bite shenanigans. Looks like they're gonna want to put a counter on something. Yeah, basically the only card I don't want to draw here is planes. I just don't want planes. <sighs> I don't have a good attack anymore, so we're ha we'll hang out. And it's nice, because now that we have this 4-5 sample collector, we can block the eavesdropper. I think this is just a blink. So we're kind of at parity here. I can use the charm to potentially blow them out, but I need the forest. I can also use it to get a glint weaver, which would be quite strong here. Uh, the Wojek Investigator, I don't think it's that great, because we're both kind of hellbent. Hellbent meaning we both basically have no cards in hand. Inside source. Okay. 
They can turn the eavesdropper into a 5-3. Okay, so that's our forest. But I don't think we have a good attack. I mean, they, right now they're ahead on board. The only thing that we have is this charm to kind of potentially try to blow them out. I wonder if I just keep this as a trick. I don't think a spider changes anything. Because like a spider... Um, I mean, it is pretty good. Yeah, let's go get the spider, I guess. Oh, that's really good too. I'm going to spread around the love here. One, one, one. Uh, but I'm not going to attack until I can cast Auspicious Arrival. So that's what we'll do. <laughs> they also have a Glint Weaver, but they didn't get to cast it. But we're at 18 now. We c we're kind of hoping that they whiff this turn. Kind of hoping for a whiff. Next turn, I think we just jam. Oh my gosh, they drew a second Glint Weaver. Never mind. Oh gosh. What a disaster. All right. Well... Now I'm not feeling, I mean, they just, yeah, now I'm not feeling good. Look, I had to tutor for mine. You can't just naturally draw yours. That's not cool. So they have a 6-6 six, six in play. Yep. I mean, now we're just kind of playing the waiting game, and I feel like I've just played all my good cards. So we shall see what they do. I mean, we have a pretty decent board. It's pretty hard for them to attack us unless they draw some kind of a combat trick. Oh my gosh. Our opponent is savage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's dead. I mean, just Glint Weaver into Case of the Gateway Express on an even board. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. Well, I hope they make this attack because this is a very bad attack. Okay, it's not very bad, but. All right, so we're going to take the six from the eavesdropper. Let's kill a glint weaver. Let's kill a sanitation automaton. And let's block this glint weaver. Let's pump our Tulsimir. Let's draw a card. I guess I should have pumped Tulsimir first before... Yeah, okay. Oh. Ooh. That can force something to block something. Yeah, I know. Well said, right? Uh, yeah, I think I'm interested in that. What do I attack with? Is it the Tulsimir? I can force a dog to block, and then Tulsimir will trade it for a dog in a 3-2. I think I want to keep the Glint Weaver in play in case they draw a flyer. Oh, I can also attack with the V2 Ghazi Inspector. No, that can't kill two things, though. All right, Tulsimir, you've done a lot of work. Your doggo, you attack. I guess I'll... Um, like With this in play, now I, I am interested in just trying to whittle down the board. Oh, they just block with the dog? Okay. I mean, they don't have a great attack. I suppose they can um they can give the Lockstead on Eavesdropper Vigilance. Yeah, that's pretty good. We don't have a great block. Right, we took a lot of damage for that one. Okay, inside source, nothing there. All right, let's go play it. 9-6. So how can we deal 6 damage to it? So now we can block with a detective and 
probably Tulsimir. It's it's a smaller creature. I think I care more about the sizing now than the life gain. All right, I don't. I have no idea what this face down card can be. Obviously. Quite the game here. Quite the game. Oh, that's an interesting draw. Don't have any detectives here. Um, I don't, I mean, at nine, we're still, we're kind of hoping. Okay. All right. So we're kind of hoping they're the one who blinks and makes like a big attack. And then we can hopefully, oh my gosh. Oh, this is gnarly. Okay. A killer among us, a dog walker, killer among us, case, glint weaver. Whew. And we're at nine. Whew. I think they're going to wait till next turn and make a huge attack. So we have 10 mana available to us. So I'm just going to play this face up. And pass. All right. All right. Next turn, there will be an attack with magic cards, most likely. I will trade, kind of want to keep my flyer, probably trade my Glint Weaver. If they attack with just a lone creature to give it death touch, I will probably just go ahead and block that with my Glint Weaver. Tulsimeter has gained us so much life and it's also made it really difficult for them to attack us. This is a good game though, just a lot of back and forth. But I've cast all my rares. I cast the Charm and the Tulsimir. Oh, and I have a Wojak Investigator, I guess. All right, are you going to do it? Go big or go home? Go big or go home? We have lots of favorable blocks here. Okay. Okay, well, we're definitely blocking that. Um... So let's go 2-2 and something with 4 power. Is it the Tulsimir? It's got the lowest power on board. But I feel like if I can win a combat with this and gain life, that's also really valuable. So let's just block like that. I think I'd rather have the 4-5 in play because that's a clean block on the Dog Walker. All right, Eavesdropper down. Inside source. I mean, we need to get something going here with the Phantom, right? Did they draw on the job? Man, they attack so fast. Like, they've been so meticulous before and they just attacked us so quickly. All right, well, let's make the good blocks here. So we block the 4-1 there. Block a 2-1 here. Um... Let's block some doggos. Block that there. Block this here. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen damage. That's fifteen damage. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen damage. We gain six. I mean, unless we block all of these. Something like that, maybe. I mean, I think I'm still just casting this on the job. It gains me a bunch of life and it kills us 4-4. I think they're weighing out their options too. On the job seems really good for them. I guess if I was worried about on the job, I could have blocked something else with the Culvert Ambusher. It looks like they have something though. I mean, if they have on the job, you just cast it. It could be a different combat trick though. But I think if this just happens, we're pretty happy. I think they're pretty incentivized to kill our Tulsimir with a trick. And they did find it. All right. So that's a five. I, I'm just going to cast this. Um, only to gain more life and to kill their uh, Death Touch Goblin. All right. So that cleaned up the board considerably. We're at eight life. They have some doggos. But... It's looking good for us now.
We're at eight life. We have two blockers that are bigger than the dogs. Let's flip this up. Um, let's attack like that. Then we play another tipster. And this was an epic game. This was an epic, epic game. Tulsimir Lifelink was so good for us. And wow, I cannot believe we won that game. Our combat tricks were so good once again. Um, we were able to develop a good enough board where it kind of forced the action on the opponent to flinch first. And then that allowed us to really leverage the, the tricks that we had to, uh, to be able to come back there. Keeping this hand. It's not the best, not the worst. Turn three inside source. Into some number of combat tricks. Tunnel tips your turn two. Always hoping for it. Uh, you know what? I'll take Tolsamir. Case of the fill. Ooh, they almost have it turned on because they have seen of the crime. That's cool. We do have the charm. Could kill the 4 4 in a pinch. What do we want here? Well, if it's a land, I would like a forest. If not, obviously just any creature I can play next turn. Etrada. Okay. Bite down was a great draw. Great, great, great draw. Not gonna lie. Etrada, very good. Basically, if you ever, if you're like on the play, and presumably blue black decks have lots of bounce and removal spells, if you're on the play, this thing is a problem. It's there's a good shot this thing can either hit or force you to chum block, and if it hits, you just start cloaking cards on top from the top of your deck. Does a lot of work. Is this a nervous gardener? That would be an odd. I guess they could be like blue green or something, but didn't want to attack with the inside source. I think it's just an easy enough block. It forced me forces me to use a trick. All right. Well, I'm not going to use a trick to save my creature because I'm playing Tolsamir. Yeah, it's good. It's uh it's a really good card. You need a removal spell. Uh, this feels like it could be an out cold into turn on case of the filch falcon. Or it can be absolutely nothing. I mean, it's a murder maybe. Okay. Inside source was a pretty good draw though, because um, now next turn we can set up a really, really good on the job. Don't think I wanted to just jam fanatical strength there to do some damage although next turn like getting land number six to go on the job plus fanatical strength is really nice Ooh, red all right just don't play a sweeper that's that's kind of the um that 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 that's the card that really really gets them back into it if they just play like two face down creatures that's fine for us but if they play Deadly cover up. I always mess up. Is it deadly cover up? Whatever. The five mana black wrath. Then obviously we are in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Face up shady informant. That is totally fine. Um, let me see. This is a, uh, they get to block Tolsimir and they take two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, not quite enough. They have black mana available. Hold on. Let me think here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's a kill here. One black mana. There's basically no removal spell I'm concerned about. So the kill here is actually interesting. It's a main phase fanatical strength on Tulsimir into evidenced bite down on crime. Oh no, that's not a kill. Oh, I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. 
<laughs> I, here, here I thought I was smart. Here I thought I was smart, but I'm not. Oh well. No, this only this just gets in for. Uh, no, that this was this was this was actually awful. <laughs> <sighs> Paul, 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 Paul. The correct thing to do was just bite down. On Though the thing is, we still got in for a lot of damage. Like, if we bite down on crime, if we bite down on crime, they kill the Tulsimir. And then we attack for four. It might have still actually been. Oh, Doppelgang for one? Oh my gosh. Man, did we throw this game away? They copied our Tulsimir. And we don't have the green source here? Oh my god. Oh wow, yeah, that was so, so bad. So, so bad. <laughs> don't I wish I had the, um, the pump spell or the bite spell there? Now they're at one and I have an inside source. They can easily come back from this spot. Wow, I was... Oh, man, I... I... Alright, well... Look... Not going to get perfect play here. That was very sloppy. I just, I thought I had lethal there. That That's, simply put, that's, 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 I just thought, I thought I had lethal. That was it. And I did not. All right, they still have two cards in hand. We have a flyer. We can use the charm to get something good too. I don't know what this card is, obviously. It's another face down card. Okay, so maybe the flyer gets us there. Probably save the charm and crack the clue instead. All right, I'm um, going to play the land. I'm going to attack, then I'm going to flip it up. Let's hope this gets it done. It's a coveted falcon, I see. They can't turn on case of the filch falcon. They might want, they might have want, no, they were one artifact short anyways. Okay. Wow, that was not our finest moment. <laughs> so, so what's the real play there? Is it just attack with everything? No, because attack with everything on the job is bad. I still lose two creatures if I do that. It's, it's probably attack with everything and just fanatical strike, to be honest. They'll block my Tulsimir, and then my Tulsimir dies after the trade but I still have Bite Down and Crime available for the next turn. So that was the play. Oh, I just, I got a, they gave me a land? Oh, because they wanted to draw a card? Okay. Wait, why was the land untapped? So many questions. <laughs> okay. So why did I get an untapped mountain? Is this a wrath? They just attacked me with a... They're at one and they attack me with a face down creature. Like flip over Crocodile or flip over Hunted Bone Brute and cast Toxin Analysis to gain six. I mean, we're at 44. Okay, they gain some life. Okay, okay, this is all interesting. Okay, the sequencing, I don't... This is still in the middle of their attack. They're at three now though. And we have the mana because of the mountain they gave us to flip up the ambusher and force a block too. Holy cow, that's also really good. Three, seven. Okay, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to play the Glint Weaver. Because now I can put two counters on inside source and one counter on face down card. And that's, a, that's lethal with three creatures. So 
So even if they kill my phantom, they die. They need double removal spell. Toxin analysis doesn't do it. Unless they had toxin analysis plus removal spell. Holy cow. Do they have galvanize? No. Shock doesn't do it. There's no one mana spell here. Okay. Yeah, Glint Weaver was a great draw. Great, great draw. Okay, we are close now. We are close. Oh, they gave us... I didn't even realize they gave us the case of the Phil Chalkin as well. Okay. All right, we are six and one. Six and one. Uh, perhaps a couple of missteps there in sequencing, but... Tulsimir allows you to make up for a lot of mistakes. Okay, what does this hand look like? We're on the draw with an inside source and a face down card. We'll keep. I feel like we draw this charm every game. We are very far away from actually casting it, but... Yeah, I mean, this this is... Especially against a turn one mask maker, I mean, I feel like we're 30% to win this game. At least they didn't have a face down card. Playing a, like an it looks like a tempo, tempo ish blue red deck. And you, uh, the interesting thing, I actually think I want to play this card over Inside Source because this one is more resilient to the removal spell that they're kind of trying to represent here, and so I can block. Whereas the Inside Source, if they have an unauthorized exit or a shock or a galvanize, they can just kill my two two and attack again freely. Whereas this actually takes a turn. And they had to galvanize. Would like to draw some forests if I draw any lands. If not, then we're just going to probably do the same thing with... Hmm, actually, maybe now is okay to play the inside source. Because now I'm in a spot where if I draw a forest, I'd like to just play the crowd control warden face up potentially. I think we're on nine forest, eight planes, but man, we have an affinity towards planes. All right, yeah, yeah, they're they're definitely on the on the tempo plan. Forest, no, I don't want that. They have an interesting spot. Yeah, they're drawing clue cards, but it's just like, do you want to find an artifact for case of the failed falcon, or do you want to just keep drawing cards and put, keep trying to put additional pressure? I'm just going to take this one, I think. Next turn, I can flip this up. And we're probably going to draw another green card here, so. Yeah. Drew another green card. <laughs> yeah. I swear we're playing a two-color deck. I mean, if we go back to back forest, we might have a chance. Oh, geez. Prof's eidetic memory is busted. They're about to put two plus one plus one counters onto the Thopter. So we need we, we need like makeshift binding, I guess. I don't know. Yep. Yep. I mean, I'll take Forest still, maybe. I don't know. I, I think we're probably dead here. Okay, so that's a Forest. And at this point, we play Tunnel Tipster and hope we're not dead. And hope Glint Weaver gets us there. We are, we are on that plan. If they draw two cards, we are dead. If they pump their 3-3, three, three, we're dead. If they shock us, we're dead. If they cast out cold, probably dead. Cold case cracker we can beat, potentially. All right, so we are 100% casting Glint Weaver. And how many counters do we want to put on it? At least two. It's just how much more life do I want to gain? Well, let's just put everything on here. Well, I can gain one more life if I put a counter on the crowd control warden, but I, I think I want just to put all three here. 
Oh, they had to galvanize. Okay, that's that's wonderful. Wait, I, do I still not gain the life? Oh, so if you counter the counter, if you kill the creature in response and you only target one thing, you can fizzle it with galvanize. I, I actually was under the impression that I could still gain the sixth life. So anyways, we're dead. Uh, if we put a counter on the warden, we would have gained seven and gone to nine. And then they would have hit us for six in the air and we're still probably dead. But that's a good thing to know. Okay, six and two. Got another shot at the trophy. Like we said before, on the play with the tipster and a Tulsimir and some lands. Uh, one of them being forests would be nice. But all in all, still pretty happy with how things are going. We'll keep this. No two drop, but... Got some tricks, got an inside source, and got a removal spell. So turn three inside source into some tricks. Not the worst, especially the auspicious arrival, as it allows us to go through our deck. Top of the deck did not provide a creature. All right, so they got a two drop. Ooh, aftermath analyst. So they're, they're trying to go a little bit longer. They milled one land, Mayshift binding, and novice inspector. So their deck is fantastic. Yeah, their deck is great. So far. I mean, I like those. Those are premium white commons. Premium white commons. It's really hard to attack a green-white opponent that has access to all that mana. But I will attack anyways. Worth a shot. Gonna play the investigator here and basically put the pressure on my opponent. Do you have a bite down on crime? If you don't, then I'm gonna be able to uh, potentially take over here. We flipped over a makeshift binding. Oh, bite down doesn't even do it. It has to be makeshift binding or buried in the garden, right? Because they have a one three in play. Ah. <sighs> uh. That's that's frustrating. Just because, I mean, if I if I can if I found like an an actual threat this turn, that would have been that would be nice. But that's really frustrating. Like not not doing something for one turn here is just so devastating. I could have attacked with both, but it just that doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> I'm glad you can see this for YouTube. Hide in plain sight number five, I think. Out of five or six out of nine matches. Oh my, that's, that's ridiculous. Wow, they have premium, premium cards. Hmm. No great attacks. And now we just have to play the the guessing game of hey, what what uh you want you want you mind telling me what your your face down cards are? I I'd really appreciate it if you told me. Another aftermath analyst. What is this deck? Delny. Ooh, Delny plus sample collector. They're cooking. They're cooking. Novices, but killer among us. Okay. Their deck is way better than ours. They're down to one card. I can makeshift binding the 4-4 at some point. You know, I think I'm just going to play this face up. I just want to have a 4-5 in play with this board. You you block. <laughs> oh, I could do that. I don't know what they chose, but maybe we get lucky. <laughs> Is 
It's a one in three shot, right? It's a one in three shot at killing whatever the killer among us uh, targeted. It would be so funny if we got the killer among us target. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Come on. How s ah, it was the merfolk, you sneaky merfolk. Ah. It was the merfolk. Damn it. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe these were whiffs. That one... Okay, so the creature on the right is not a hide in plain sight card. I'm just going to keep adding to the board. Let's not fall behind on board. Now, next turn is going to be interesting because I had this Culvert Ambusher and seeing whether or not they attack with the Merfolk because we have a combat trick to match their combat trick. They're, they have four mana. Aftermath Analyst gets them one land? Is that... Do they have Doppelgang? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean... They just got one land with this. <sighs> Whenever people do stuff like that, I just go, yep. Yep. I don't think we're beat. I mean, has anybody ever beaten a doppelganger for two? Real question. It could be Aurelia's Vindicator as well, if they need more mana. Whatever the case may be. No, there, there, there's... Okay, it's just Killer Among Us. I mean, that's also fantastic, obviously. Ah. And then they can target this. And make it into a 4-4 four, four Death Toucher. Well, I guess we don't block. All right. Well, we are leaning we are leaning so heavily on this uh <laughs> We're leaning so heavily on our culvert ambusher to take us home. I'm going to play the tipster here. I know I can flip over the defenestrated phantom, but I want to leave up double combat trick while also playing this. I think double combat trick will be good. We're at 12 life. Can they kill us? Okay. That is that is great for us. I'm just wondering if I need to kill one of these 4-4s. Four Perhaps this face down card that they played. I'm at 12. So I can block 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. Okay, no, I'm okay. Ish. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight mana, so I have enough mana to flip over the Phantom and then double combat trick. But remember, this face down card, they can flip over now. We'll see what it is. I mean, if it was a Green Belt Radical, we would just be dead. So it's not that. <laughs> you know, there are worse ways to go out. We've had our fun with this card. We had our fun with this card yesterday, in fact. There are worse ways to go out. Our opponent had the far superior green-white deck. They have Aurelia's Vindicator. Hit them with the good game. Aurelia's Vindicator for five. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> Hide and play sight, Aurelia's Vindicator. Whew. I mean, after my deck a few days ago, I can't complain about the power level of my opponent's decks. And I had a Tulsimir, but man, their deck was sweet. Double killer among us. Hide in plain sight with the Vindicator. So this was our deck. And we definitely could have drafted this deck differently. Because um, when you're green, oftentimes in the draft, you'll have the opportunity to take cards that fix you, right? I, there are a couple of instances where I could have taken Nervous Gardener or perhaps a Topiary Panther. 
maybe even an escape tunnel, and that allows you to splash a bunch of different colors. But when I'm green-white, I don't actually mind trying to be a little more aggressive. And because I had a card like the Inside Source, I wanted to just focus on cards in my color and just utilize my combat tricks and win games that way instead of trying to really branch out into a bunch of other colors for power. Now, I don't know if that's correct. You know, certainly there were some powerful cards like Repulsive Mutation. I think there was a Torch the Witness with the mana fixing. We could have gone that direction, but I wanted to try to see what happens if we end up just going straight to colors. The issue was, I think we were still fighting people for some of our colors. And when you take the mana fixing, that allows you to play more cards. So you can branch out a little bit and play, play, um, play a wider swath of things. But look, I can't complain. We still ended up with six wins. Our combat tricks were great, right? And so we still ended up getting there, even though we definitely did have to play some number of filler cards to make it happen. But hey, six and three, we started out, we started out the draft at um, rank number 23. At six and three, we only moved up two slots. So hopefully we can turn it around and get into the teens once again. Uh, got a stream coming up soon. So hoping to make a good run there. So thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. I'll catch you tomorrow.